Hello and welcome. In today's video, we're going to be talking about paradoxical reactions from thiamine supplementation. All of the different diseases related to deep thiamine deficiency have some sort of relation to the nervous system, the brain, or energy creation. Beriberi, dysautonomia, POTS, neuropathy, and many different digestive issues are tightly related to the health of the nervous system. Chronic fatigue syndrome, myalgic encephalitis, and fibromyalgia are all related to energy creation, and Parkinson's is related to the brain. Now, of course, this is not an exhaustive list. There are so many other conditions that are involved with thiamine deficiency, and that is because there are so many conditions that are involved with the brain, the nervous system, and energy production. This just proves how important thiamine is as a supplement and a nutrient for your body to function properly. So what are the different risk factors and causes of thiamine deficiency? They are chronic stress. And chronic stress will cause deficiencies in loads of other nutrients, not just thiamine. High consumption of sugar and carbohydrates, especially when it comes to rice. Rice is extremely dangerous to your thiamine stores, especially if it's white or polished rice. Diuretics and other medications as well as surgery and infection, chronic consumption of alcohol as well. And probably the greatest one is actually poor digestion or poor absorption of thiamine and other B vitamins. This will greatly contribute to the stores of the nutrients that you need to prevent these illnesses of the nervous system and brain. Severe deficiency often requires long-term supplementation of thiamine at mega dose levels. And this can look like six months, nine months, or even 12 months or longer at absurd levels of thiamine. But this is what is actually necessary to get at those extremely deep deficiencies that are involved with these illnesses of the nervous system, brain, and energy. Benfothiamine and TTFD are the two best supplements at getting at these deficiencies, but they are also extremely potent and therefore they can cause paradoxical reactions or increases in very uncomfortable symptoms or new symptoms arising. So in these cases, it might be wise to start supplementing with thiamine HCL because the rate of absorption is a bit lower and it's going to be a lot better for people who are very sensitive and very deficient. That's not to say that benfothiamine and TTFD are not amazing supplements. They are. And if you can handle going through these paradoxical reactions, it's going to be very, very helpful to do these supplements long term. You can't really go wrong with one or the other. They both have their benefits. Benfothiamine has a little bit higher bioavailability, but it's not quite as strong in addressing deficiencies in the brain. TTFD is much better at breaking the blood-brain barrier, but I do often find that people are more sensitive to TTFD than the benfothiamine. When it comes to dosage of thiamine supplements, it's crucial that you start slow, oftentimes slower than you would initially think. With benfothiamine, 250 milligrams per day or less and TTFD 100 milligrams per day or less. If one pill is still too much, you can break open the capsule and measure out a quarter or a half of the powder inside of the pill and start there. And don't feel bad about not being able to handle as much as other people might. I've seen people taking 1 64th of a benfothiamine pill because that is all that they can actually tolerate and their deficiencies are so, so severe. So again, don't feel bad about starting slow and going up gradually. It's very, very important that your body is only getting what it can tolerate. You want to make sure that you're only increasing the dosage after you have reached a new baseline with your symptoms. So what this looks like is you've taken the same amount of the supplement for one or two weeks, with no changes in your symptoms. That means that you can increase your dosage by another pill. You want to take these supplements earlier in the day with your first meal because thiamine can be quite stimulating and taking it too late in the day can actually disrupt your sleep. Like I said before, if TTFD and benfothiamine are too strong for you, make sure to try thiamine HCL and see if that works better for you. A final point here I really want to emphasize. If you have a intolerance to sulfur, do not take TTFD because TTFD is a sulfur 
and this can cause all sorts of different reactions. Sulfur sensitivity or intolerance usually shows up as an inability to digest foods that have a lot of sulfur. So eggs, garlic, onions, cruciferous vegetables. So instead, I would recommend supplementing the benfothiamine. Long-term supplementation of the benfothiamine can actually address an underlying sensitivity to sulfur. So here's what to expect with paradoxical reactions. You can expect a temporary worsening of symptoms after initially starting the supplement or after increasing your dosage. Keep in mind that this is not something that you have to push through. You do not have to push through paradoxical reactions. There's nothing wrong with doing so. It can be quite uncomfortable. Just keep in mind that you can always decrease the dosage and be more comfortable while you're addressing these deep thiamine deficiencies. You can also expect to achieve a new baseline after maintaining a dosage for several days or a week or two weeks. After reaching this new baseline, that is when you can start to look at increasing your dosage. And over the long term, you can expect a dramatic improvement in all of your symptoms related to your nervous system, your brain, and production of energy. Thiamine supplementation is amazing. So, so powerful. And here are some final notes on this topic. If you are taking a quercetin supplement, be mindful that quercetin actually depletes thiamine. Yes, it can be a helpful supplement for histamine intolerance and a few other things, but it can actually be making many of your symptoms worse because of the fact that it does deplete thiamine over a long period of time. Clostridium bacteria can actually cause very severe deficiencies of thiamine, and that is because it will block your absorption of thiamine. The people that I see who have this bacterial infection or were exposed to the C. difficile bacteria tend to be the most sensitive and have the worst paradoxical reactions. These are the people who are taking 1 64th or 1 128th of a pill of benfothiamine. Other important nutrients to keep in mind when supplementing thiamine would be all of your different electrolytes, different B vitamins, and alpha lipoic acid. These are all tightly involved with the health of the nervous system and interact very tightly with thiamine absorption. So if you are curious about where you might stand with these nutrients, I would recommend taking the SpectraCell micronutrient test. And if you want to address thiamine deficiency even faster, I would recommend eating a lot of pork. Pork is the food that is highest in thiamine, so get eating a lot of pork, find a good source of pork, and enjoy your bacon and your pork steaks. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and found some useful information. Please let me know what you'd like to see next and I'll see you next time. Thanks guys.